And less extreme versions of that theory are attributable to W.D. Hamilton, who thought that um, uh, health was the primary virtue which a male is advertising to females, and a beautiful tail is an advertisement to a female, this is a healthy male. He's not suffering from parasites, he's resistant to, pa to parasites. Otherwise, he wouldn't have this beautiful, glowing, sexy tail. So, um, uh, that was just an interruption because we were talking about um, the, 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 the Zahavi Hamilton type theory, which Brett favors. So I'm sorry, okay. So, no, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, and it actually shows exactly the point that I was trying to make, which is that you've now heard a lot. There's plenty of good work um, that suggests that this could be handicap um, that would demonstrate uh, the, the genes have to be heritable in order for females to be favored to be selecting for them. But the problem is that there is a rotten piece of this theory right at the heart, which is that females are choosing to inflict this burden on their male offspring, which is ecologically certain to be costly to them. So if females are attempting to find good genes by putting males through a test, then they are inflicting bad genes on their male offspring. Those bad genes will be transmitted by their female offspring, but not expressed, so the females will not suffer the cost of that handicap. But there's a question of how it is that females recover enough of a benefit for their female offspring to justify the costs for the male offspring. So there's a way in which, although one can make a mathematically compelling argument for a handicap idea or, or a good genes idea, um, that it has to account for a very large benefit for female offspring. And what's worse, if you imagine a species, like let's say we're talking about peacocks. Peacocks, the female, the peahen, inflicts this marvelous tail on her male offspring by choosing fathers that have it in peacocks, like all creatures that have these elaborate displays. Males contribute nothing other than genes, so if she's picking something valuable, it has to be encoded in the genes. Um, so she inflicts this cost on her male offspring and presumably then acquires a benefit for her female offspring. But they do this each and every generation. Only a small number of males in each generation mate. Females choosing these tails pick the same males again and again. So that ought to leave the number of bad genes in the environment very small because females are eliminating those bad genes each and every generation, which means that after a small number of generations, there ought to be very little advantage in picking males with beautiful tails because there are no bad genes left. And so the question is, if one of these good genes hypotheses is correct, why is female vigilance constant? It should be females select against bad genes, the number of bad genes drops, female vigilance now has no value, female vigilance should drop, bad genes should crop back up, female vigilance should rise again, and we should see an oscillating pattern, but we don't see it. What we see is generation after generation, females choose the males with the most elaborate tails. So it doesn't matter what the answer is here. The point is this is a question that year after year remains with us and we make no progress on it. We are still fumbling with explanations that have one value but don't completely answer the question. So why is that? But this is a matter for mathematical modeling and it's being done and there are various different mathematical models which um, we can't go into now, but, but, but I mean, th this is something that is an active field of theoretical research, well, and it's going on.